welcome back to Rugby AM's Mad Monday right here at All Star FM. The brand new studio. Two great guests inside tonight. We've got Warrington's Paul Wood. He's at one ball and he's a super hard man. And we've got Mickey Iam, who just uh, is Tony Smith's little bitch. But he's, uh, <laughs> uh, great to have you in, in tonight, boys. Um, obviously, we've got banter with you. We're going to do a, <coughs> we're going to run over the talking points of the week right now. Tony Ray leaving uh, Broncos. We've touched on it before. Is the Broncos doomed now, Jones? That's the question. Are they doomed, mate? I've, uh, they've been struggling for a long time, haven't they? They've not won, well, they've not won a game. I don't know if they're going to win a game. I, I don't want to be critical. Uh, lads down there. But you're at London. A lot of respect for the guys that are playing. We've got some young lads of our, of our own down there, so a big learning curve. Uh, total respect for everybody involved. I just, I'm just becoming a bit disillusioned, actually, with rugby league in London. Uh, I watched, really briefly, 30 seconds, I watched a, a play from Eddie Waring, uh, who was a famous commentator back in the uh, sort of 70s, and he retired uh, and let Ray French take over in 1981. And basically, Eddie Waring was a, a real sort of celebrity in British television. He was watched by 28 million people on the uh, Christmas, um, what was the comedy shows? Uh, forget. Mockham and Wise. Mockham and Wise. He was on It's a Knockout. And uh, basically, the, the, the question was whether Eddie Waring good for the game or not, because uh, the Southern people pretty much pigeonholed him as this northern flat capper, crap pot guy who. Uh, who speaks Northern and, and you know how they look on Northern people being a little bit backwards. And I'm starting to wonder whether it's actually a, a, a game thing. You know, rugby is the best game in the world. Or whether it's just the fact that it's, it's originated in a Northern game and don't want anything to do with it. I mean, if anybody watched games of, Game of Thrones, have you watched Game of Thrones, anybody? I haven't watched it yet. I need you to get into it. Have you watched it, will you? No, no. Well, everybody's banging on about it at the minute. When you do, right, there's these guys called Lannisters who are down south on King's Landing, rich, all bells and whistles and all that carry on, right? Then the Northerners... Um, they're all portrayed as guys that run around with dogs and big sheepskin coats on, and they're a bit do- odd. You know what I mean? They've got loads of kids and, and a bit weird, a bit like you know, like Dingles in Emmerdale, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. like that. Uh, and basically, I just think that the, the South are not bothered; they don't want it. We've been trying to shove it down the next few years, and when we've got teams like obviously Bradford, Wakey, and that who've struggled in recent times, I think maybe maybe it's a couple of point where we just make it as good as it absolutely can be up in the North and, and stop worrying about elsewhere. Do you enjoy that Games of Thrones, you, Jonesa? It's a bit um, naughty for my... I get embarrassed That's, that's what I'm going to say. It's, yeah, it's got a lot I, uh, of nudity and sex uh, in it. I but like. I shut my eyes and I'd be like, <laughs> and, uh, I get my missus to fast forward it for me. <laughs> uh, but I, I don't like that bit, but yeah, I do, mate. Emma, look, think about Coronation Street as well. Coronation Street, they're all living back to back houses. from Game of Thrones to Coronation Street. They're all living back to back houses. They're working in a knicker factory, right? All people in the street. <laughs> no mince about in this pub. Right? Northerners are not like that anymore. They haven't been for 40, 50 years, but that's what South think of us. Um, so let them get on with it. I just think we should make the game as good as it can be here. We've got a big heritage and, and let's crack on. What well, that's got to do with uh, Tony, I don't know, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, do, you, do you reckon we're a success at Feverston if you go to Feverston? Yeah, absolutely. He's got loads of experience. I'm sure he'll bring something to Featherston uh, if that's where he's going. I feel a bit for John Bastian. He's a great fellow and uh, you know, he's a mentor for me when he's at Leeds doing youth development. Uh, I, I don't really know what's going on there. It's, probably, it's none of my business, really. But what do you, I don't know. You two, you two guys know uh, John Bastian. He'll be responsible for a lot of the youth coming through at Warrington. Yeah, pretty much similar to me, really. Uh, I, I started coaching the under-16 scholarship through John and uh, worked about 18 months with him. And uh, fantastic and... The uh, the amount of kids that is that is brought through the the uh, scholarship there, a lot of them are playing first team now at Warrington. Uh, Reece Evans, Ben Evans, you know they they're playing up there. They're brothers, isn't it? They're, they're twin brothers actually, I believe. Reece Evans and yeah. Ben Evans. Yeah, Re- Reece Evans and Ben, the twin, not identical, obviously, but yeah. Uh, I can't believe that. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 Reece Evans looks so old. Yeah, now nah, they're, they're both uh, both young lads are only about. 20 years of age, are they? Yeah, but 21, 22. Yeah. And uh, John, John, you know, he, he, he brought them through, uh, you know, a f- and a few other kids that are, that are like in the wings now, you know, Mickey mentioned the King brothers, um, you know, and I think what he did at Warrington certainly was uh, was was fantastic and I think he brought uh, a lot of discipline and uh, he gave a lot of lad a lot of lads chances as well. And that's that's where he was big on uh you know, if you if you worked hard, he, he was willing to give you a chance and uh, make you into good rugby players. Opportunity is important. So I'll ask the question, have we given London an opportunity to be everything it can be? And is it ever going to be more than it is? On a, on a positive side, I think they're saying that the amateur game has absolutely grown in tenfolds down there. Obviously, the Super League club hasn't, hasn't blossomed like people would expect, but I think the amateur game has, has taken off a little bit. Uh, 
there are a few players coming through the system, which I suppose is good. You know, obviously the signing of St. Helens and, and such to speak, but it's it's one of them things. It's just gonna it's just gonna take a lot of time, but it, it needs to, it needs to grow a lot more in the amateur game, and I think it has started to bed in a little bit. So we need to invest in London scholars then. And, and let the amateur game grow up. It's got to go from the bottom up, on it? And it's always going to be difficult because if you notice, the players that sign at London normally have, they're on the last legs, the last chance to loan, you know, they've been they've been at the Super League, it, you know, it's downright, that's that's how it happens if they're either Australians or Kiwis signing for the Broncos or it's players that are not necessarily wanted as well in the, in the Northern Hemisphere. So they're picking up a lot of the... No disrespect, but you know some 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 average players, so they're going to be an average team. Uh, and I think until you get away from that, that stigmatism, uh, then things aren't going to change very quickly. I'm all for supporting what's already down there. The kids, don't get me wrong here, uh, but flogging a dead horse is, is a waste of time. Tony Club, Sargentson, McCarthy, Scarsbrook, Warren. Say there's a lot of good lads down there that have come up, and we don't want to miss out on that talent. But you know, in terms of Super League, I think it should start with London Scholars probably. The another really big thing this week, Keith and uh, Joe Moon, your the man that's taking your shirt and is finally seems to be fitting for your shirt, signed until 2018. Yeah, great signing. Uh, Zach Hardy took, Hardy took my shirt first. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's good. We all knew we were a quality signing. and it's coming and it's fitted in really well. Uh, and I think that's it. And, and the back five at Leeds at the moment. Or back is, six. Is, yeah, we're, we're Bish as well. You know, they've put it in Rugby League World this week. They're absolutely immense. And I think they've been the positive signs of, uh, of Leeds this year. Uh, down to the defence, but the back five, the back six, you saw you speak, that he's rotating him, he's Brian Mack, which is good to see. He's chucking Bish in there and he's resting his players. Uh, when he, Ryan Hall didn't start off the greatest of seasons, and I think when he, he gave him a little bit of a nudge and, and rested him, so to speak, whatever you want to call it, dropped or rested, uh, and I think it was a little bit of a kick up the backside for him, so, you know, they're complementing each other very, very well. Um, there has been a raft of signings at Witness uh, this week, Lloyd White is the Sixth or seventh perfect to sign within the last couple of weeks. Witness trying to secure a squad for the next couple of years, really. Yeah, well, that's it. There's there's quite a few re-signed, aren't there? Zayman O'Carroll, Steph March, Paul Johnson, <laughs> Phil Joseph, Liam Carberry and Danny Galea. Uh, you know, so that's seven, as well as, uh, right, say, Lloyd White. So he's happy with his squad. Uh, he thinks that they're doing well, Dennis Betts, and uh, he's showing in Super League at the moment, so... Obviously, they're going to need to make a few additions for, for next year because change sometimes is, is quite good, but the the playing as a team, and I think that's the biggest thing, is trying to keep the nucleus of his team together. Last but not least, um, Kevin Locke signing. He's like, literally a rugby league superstar, but the um, he must be one of, the, one of the two top player players in this country, I would have thought now, Long, probably, alongside Rocky Chase probably. But it's, um, A, how, the, how can they afford him, and B, is this going to help him get up the table? Because just, it's just Marwan Kukas must be pulling his hair out in his uh, ivory tower. He's got more hair, has he? <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm interested in what our guys here think about uh, about Lock coming over and, and how he's being funded, Mickey. Well, yes, yeah, from a Salford point of view, it's a great signing. You know, he's it was the World Cup fullback for, um, for for New Zealand, and he had a you know he had a great World Cup and um, <coughs> you know a great coup from. Uh, doctor, you know, get him over, but um, so I don't know. I don't know how they're going to fit him under the cell cap with the team they've got. I don't know them. Obviously, they must be doing. He's with well, his wife's a very highly paid cleaner for Salford City. I don't know what it is, um, <laughs> but yeah, um, good. I suppose good for our game. You know, the, the big signing. You know, they've, they've signed a few big signings this year, and they've not quite, they've not quite gelled yet. So, you know, I'm sure it might take more than just you know one big more signing. I think it might take a few more, but only time, only time will tell. Is he, is he coming this year, or is it for next year? I think he's, is it next season he starts? So it's massive, though, isn't it? That Kevin Lock. Mm. They need to keep bringing you through, mate. That's why they need to invest, not in the big players. Uh, it don't matter as long as they're not getting relegated. As long, you know, they keep ticking over, keep winning games. They don't have to win loads of trophies overnight. It's, it's not soccer. It's not like that. It never will work in rugby. You've got to do what John Bastian did. You've got to do what uh, you know. Lad people at Wigan have done. Brought lads through. Uh, St. Helens, have, I, I mentioned um, last week. Went well, over uh, speak to Mike Rush and you know the the, the lads that St Helens have brought through over the years is phenomenal. That's why they've been so good. Leeds as well. That's how success is bred. Um, not so much through signings, personally, in my own opinion. Right, we've got some fans' questions to go through now. Uh, Gary Ron fans, the uh, number one listener for the show. Are you uh, familiar with this guy? Uh, Gary, are oh, you not on Twitter? Would it? That's uh, that's what? Richie Mavers. That. <laughs> why, why are you not on Twitter? 
I'm a, I, I just uh, have no time for it, to be honest. No time for Twitter. <laughs> Uh, not what I thought. That's um, what, not what I heard. Tony, Tony Smith calls it uh, T W A T. Twitter with an R. Twitter. Yeah, yeah so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's not it's not one of my my things. I'm not into it, you know. <coughs> yeah. Nice. You're not into yeah, all the positive t- comments and everything that you'd uh, that would have been. I'm not interested in. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not interested. Oh, in high fives should have got sent by yeah, the boys. <laughs> no, just like telling people what you've had for your tea and like just going trading. What have you had for your tea today? Hashtag boom. Hashtag protein. What Richie you? Mavers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I don't see what it. What I can see a point of it for like business point of view and stuff. Because like you're that, on Twitter for your for your uh, training. Yeah, yeah, we're on Twitter uh, for training, aren't we? I tried to explain this for Luke, I don't know. Like, this is the last chance he's going to have to use Twitter, his personality, to to promote his next business, which he's moved into now. But that's what I'm saying, mate. Don't, you, don't use it as like a social media tool. Use it as purely just a, a way to to push your own business, your own it's free, brand. Well, we see it as, it's free advertising, isn't it? Yeah. You know, not, not, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but... You'd have to put things on there about you, what you're eating. No, no, do you? You know, if you can just plug your business every okay. Facebook, you know, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but... I'll just to be fair, like, with, our, with our business, like with, with the Tri Fitness one, uh, we we put the, uh, like, you know, what we do have for tea on, because it's... You know, obviously, <laughs> we're training people, but we're, we're helping them with the nutrition, well, so well, that's one thing that we do. We do do, tea? What have you had today for tea? It helps our clients as well well because they'll follow us and we give them give them suggestions you know that, that they can have for the tea so they don't go out and you know get done a kebab and chips or something but uh yeah personally doing it i just think well, i'm gonna start i'm gonna start a parody account on you would it <laughs> one ball would it there's already one bit. there's already one out though actually. <laughs> yeah. there's, there's already something paul woods testicle or something Woody's ball yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, says are the boys missing chris riley yeah he's uh because, you know, Mick is definitely missing him because it takes a bit of heat off him with Tony because, you know, Tony and his, uh, <coughs> he's a bit, he's got a bit of gingerism, and he? he's, uh, you know, he gives it the ginger lads. But, yeah, he has, he has some good banter. He's got probably worse dress sense in Super League, hasn't he? Uh, yeah, he's not got, Gets training, uh, has a shower, and then puts a full Adidas tracksuit on uh, with some trainers and all matching. It's just absolutely shocking, some of the stuff he wears. Uh, looks like he's like Sports Direct spewed up all over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from Chris, who's the better looking, Mickey after he's had his his face trampled on or Woody when he takes his teeth out? <laughs> probably Chris Riley. <Rella. laughs> yeah, probably me when I take my teeth out. I think. I've still got him covered. He's no a... chance. No <laughs> chance. From uh, Jack Garnett, what do you think about the pedestrianisation in Norwich City Centre? Clearly a Partridge fan. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 We're gonna do no meaning in a bit. Probably the Wigan faithful. What does Mickey think about the controversial three-way transfer move to Wigan in 2005? Like a three-way, Mick? Yeah, not not done it often, but. <laughs> birthdays <laughs> and Christmas. Gotta take them when you can. That's what I say. <laughs> say that's our last birthdays and Christmas, yeah. Car keys in the football, you weren't you? <laughs> keys in the pot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think we we explained to it before. Um, Obviously, leaving St. Helens, you know, to go to Wigan, but they won't sell me to Wigan end of, so I had to do it. Mm. Just to nip, uh, to nip up the M62 for 20 minutes and do kind of a swap deal with Bradford. You know, I think Bradford were pretty, mm. were quite all right with it because they were getting, you know, they, they had interest in Terry Newton as well at the time, so it was basically a swap for swap, you know, so like well, everything with me, nothing runs smooth, I don't think. What would you have done if they said, oh, we like you now, we'll keep you? <laughs> yeah. Well, do you know, when I first went, I thought, I wish you'd Yeah, just, which I, were your bigger contract, Bradford or Wigan? Um, <laughs> Well, at the time, I went to Wigan, we couldn't, we couldn't, couldn't buy a win, so I thought, oh, I should have got Bradford, you know what I mean? But, um, no, I think if Bradford at the time was still a pretty decent side, yeah. you know, um, they, still, they were still like, high, pretty high up in the league, so I, I reckon if it, if it, if it had been means staying at Bradford, I, won't, I don't think I'd have had an issue with that. But obviously, you know, Wigan just seemed you know, less travel, you know, it just seemed right for me at the time, and but luckily I got the move to Wigan, but just just obviously via, via the Bulls. Did you actually do the sign of the contract? Did they actually have a press conference as well when he signed and everything for Bradford? No, no. Not, not <laughs> so it was kept nice and low Yeah, key. yeah, yeah. We literally <laughs> swap, a, swap a the sheet in Starbucks in wherever <laughs> it was. <laughs> Turned round at Butch, didn't you, and come back to Wigan? Yeah, did he? Did he get Bradford about you? Yeah. Uh, from Wigan fans, what was Mickey's relationship like with Ryan Noble and why does he think he didn't offer him a con- new contract in 2008? <laughs> Be honest, Mickey. 
Noel's bad, mate. Come on. Um, I don't know. Obviously, you know, Keith's not had a bit of work in You know, I think all the lads here we have worked with Nobby probably on an international level, and obviously there it's probably a bit different. You know, he's um, but it, it just I think it, just with Brian at the time, he obviously probably didn't fit in his plans. Whether that's the style I played was not not what he wanted. Um, unfortunately, probably for Brian, he he just probably liked that little bit of honesty. You know, a bit of um, what's the honesty? But like um, probably. The, like the truth, you know, I think about Tony and other coaches I've worked with, you know, they're, they're brutally honest, you know, if if it's bad news, then it's bad news, but, you know, you respect them more if they tell you about it, and he kind of probably didn't, he probably didn't give me the respect I probably, I felt I deserved, you know, I'd tune in and be honest with me and say, listen, mate, you know, you're not being off a new contract, you know, but uh, thanks for your efforts, you know, I'll, I'll let maybe help you to find another club, and probably didn't go about it the right way, you know, he was telling me, you know, you would probably still be here next year, I'll get your deal and stuff. But probably knew all the while he'd, he'd signed um, a lad from Australia, Mike Riddell, at the time. So yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a kick in the teeth, really. You know, to him, just be honest and tell him. It's a bit that. of a kick in the teeth, isn't it? Piggy Riddell taking oh, his it, spot. He, he, <laughs> was, he was rubbish. He was it. He was a big dump. He was rubbish. Give him a place for him. It was a real, um, you know. I, I knew we weren't playing well, but I didn't think I didn't think it was that bad. <laughs> but no, you know, obviously a different style. Give me anything you can, anything at all. Uh, oh, look, this pig. Yeah, I'll do. <laughs> Sign him, but um, yeah. So just probably that little bit of honesty that I didn't, that, that I felt I deserved. He, um, and to rub the salt in the wound, he, he did that. <laughs> but luckily, I found you know I got managed to get a contract at Warrington, and you know I've had maybe uh, I think it's my sixth, seventh year now. Warrington's over, you know, I end up doing all right. How do you get on with Simon Moran? Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's for um, for a bloke who's that rich, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean, and you know friends to the stars, or whatever. He's um, he's quite a quiet. Quite a quiet fella. Yeah, you know, just good times, just, right? Yeah, he's just um, polite and nice, you know. But, you know, he doesn't really say a lot of words. And, you know, he's for, for a bloke, like I said, he thinks, you know, still stands in the crowd with a with a match day programme rolled up in between it under his arm. He's, he's, you know, he's still a fan of Warrington. He's, um, it's nice to have somebody like that, you know, that's not too... He don't, he don't, he don't have any influence on the team or anything, you know. He obviously backs Tony, you know, whatever he needs and stuff. So he's... Um, no, he's a, he's a great owner. I think he's been great for Warrington. Really good. Big on the perks, like uh, tickets to concerts yeah. and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Benny Westwood. He, I think it's in his contract. He needs <laughs> two concerts a month, Benny, in his contract. <laughs> he'll, he'll, go any, he'll, go, he'll go watch anybody. <laughs> but yeah, that little perks as well. You know, you can get your tickets to whoever you want, really. It's, yeah. um, it's good, like. JLS everything, can't it? Yeah, JLS. <laughs> I, I DJ for him uh, last year, and um, the DJ after me didn't turn up. And I, I, did, I did a 10 hour set. They came up and he thanked me personally. And I thought, that's it. That was massive. It was him. It just you know, no one gets to speak to Sam around. Not did he, not. Did he have any of them brewing envelopes? Or else? No, 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 yeah, I, I have any of them. No. I, I didn't get paid. <laughs> I didn't actually get paid. No. I've not seen them. It's one of them. He used to give you. Um, it's one of them. If you do well, we'll give you a bit of gigs. You got you got to do all these things for people like that. So I did a really good job for him, and thankfully I've got like loads more work off him this year. So still not getting paid, but <laughs> one day I'll get paid. We'll see. Uh, last but not least, would you agree to is having more in having co- more competitive rugby before under twelves? As this is why we are five years behind the Aussies. I don't know. I don't get that because that's like if I coach under eights and it's pretty competitive. Is it? Uh, are they talking about leagues though? Uh, do they still have leagues from? Yeah, this uh, we're, we're, it's our first year of being in a league under eights this year, so they can actually win it. We're not gonna because they keep getting hammered. There are hammering teams or getting hammered one way or other, but. It's, what do you what do you reckon? Do you, are you involved with junior rugby at all? Uh, we do the odd uh, coaching session. We do we do it through through Warrington as well. Uh, we're always going down to our old amateur club, you know, helping out out teams whenever they ask. Um, but yeah, I mean, we help uh, at Warrington. We we tend to have like fun days as as a club, and we'll, I think last year we visited about five or six amateur clubs, didn't we? we had, Open training session, didn't we? Yeah, we, had, we we do like a training session where all all the fans can can watch and then. Like we we go out on the pitch after and then uh, coach the kids and you know have pictures too and that and uh, yeah it's uh, I think you know going down you, it's I think it's uh, part of your job really going down helping amateur teams you know and, and put something back in. Well, what, what do you think, Jones? Because obviously our kids play at the same kind of age. I don't I don't understand the question if I'm honest with you. I just um, before under twelves. There's lots of competitive rugby for under before the twelves. I started when I was about nine. Our kids play, the six and seven year olds are competing most weekends. Um, five years behind the Aussies. I don't know. Maybe that's why we play 
five years longer until we're 36. <laughs> not really get it. There's plenty of opportunity for kids in rugby league in, uh, in England. Uh, but as we've mentioned last few weeks, we're certainly changing the style of rugby playing the, uh, or some younger club teams are in terms of playing five and five instead of uh, bigger numbers, 10 or 13 on 13. So that lads get more time on the ball. But yeah, there's still some improvements in amateur rugby. That, I think that's a great question. Last one at the bottom there, Simo. I don't know if you saw I know. That. From Thomas, if the salary cap wasn't an issue, who would you both sign for? No. Would you both sign for Orton? Who would you both sign for? Oh, who would you both sign for Orton? Yeah, any player you want, who would you pick to sign for Orton? Oh, I think, for me, it'd have to be that Daryl Clark. <laughs> <laughs> Desperately need an hooker, you know. And, uh, nah, um, I don't know. I'd say you had a big presence for... Uh, over there, he was pretty impressive, and uh, that was Sonny Bill Williams when we was in Australia. You, you were signing him up, weren't you? Yeah, he's he's a glamour. He's got he? a better rig than Richie Mavers in. Uh, that's Sonny Bill, but he's absolutely he's a nice guy. Uh, you know, came over, uh, introduced himself to all players, very talkative, and uh, like training wise, you could see that he was just had a big influence uh, at, at the Roosters, and obviously you only have to see him on the pitch. He's uh, you know, a fantastic player, but I think he's uh, like the all round package what I've seen so far. Yeah, I'll agree with Woody there. I was going to say probably Sam Burgess as well. We need yeah. a decent prop as well. We're a bit light on that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, probably Sam. I was going to say Sonny Bill as well. Just for all around his professionalism, you know, what he brings to it, like I said, the influence. We only spent a, you know two or three sessions with him and he, he rubbed off certainly some of our players. Just preparation, how to look after yourself as well. You know, it's... Um, those rugby players, especially over here, you kind of get on with your bumps and bruises and your knocks, like. And he was, he was quite about an eye opener how he, how he does recover and look after himself. And so judging by how you know how the condition he's in and you know how big of a lad he is, we're an athlete as well. It was um, pretty inspiring, yeah. Right, we're gonna do knowing me, knowing you now. Uh, are you ready? We're gonna get into you two boys, and then we're gonna do teammates straight after. We're gonna you got dish the day on your Warrington teammates. Aha! Love, love, love. Right, guys, um, we're going to do a bit of knowing me, knowing you. Um, you've, you've given me the wrong questions here. You've thrown me right off, Ty. You've thrown me right off. Um, out of your career so far, we'll start with Mickey. Um, what's been your best rugby league memory so far? Um, I think, obviously, the grand, my first grand final win a few years ago now, 2002, it was. You know, it was it was a flash, but you know, it's the it's the only grandfathering I've got, so you know that does stick out. Um, another one, probably me England debut in the World Cup. You know, I played New Zealand, I got a chance in there, and I played and scored on my debut, so that was pretty special. You know, I was always to play for your country and stuff. Um, and probably the first win at Warrington for Challenge Cup. Not won it in forty one years, and I was fortunate to be part of that. So it's you know, it probably three that do stand out. What's your worst rugby memory? Um. <laughs> yeah, there's been a few this year <laughs> I think um, probably I, I, I was playing for St Helens and I brought my foot in the semi-final of the Challenge Cup in the warm-up and, um, and we went on to win that Challenge Cup that year and I was on crutches the day you know great for the club but if you ask any of these boys if you're injured it's you don't feel part of it you know to go around at the end waving and all like you know you're part of the team you take it but when Keith, you're, Keith will give you that one <laughs> <laughs> when you're injured it was for me it was a, it was tough to take like you know watch the boys you know play so well and it would have been my first challenge cup like so uh, probably the injury what was the, what's the what's the best try you've ever scored I don't know I've scored a few <laughs> <laughs> I scored a cheeky one at Leeds I don't know if these guys remember it um, game was won and I think I've been a full back was it was it Ben Walker when he played come over Walker was it Walker he played the ball and um, there was nowhere behind and I picked it up and scored under the sticks <laughs> <laughs> the game, game, game was gone I might not remember that um, so a nice little cheeky try at Edinburgh you know to to cap a good win because we had a few injuries that day so um, but um, obviously me England me England try in the World Cup that's pretty special to get over um, is that a weight that? 
Oh wait, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Played, played at New Zealand. Only New game I played in, I think. That. Newcastle, was it? New Zealand. It was, yeah. 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 24-0 up, were we? 24-0 up. I went off and I thought, yeah, it's all right. And then I went back on and we about losing by about six. Yeah, no, <laughs> And then yeah. Uh, I got left out for the next game. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. What's going on here? I know. What's, the, what, what's your favourite ever away ground to play in? Um, I like Eddingley, rocking. You know, it, it, great atmosphere. Yeah, it is. It is a good atmosphere though. Uh, Bradford used to be great years ago. You know, when they used to have big crowds on, it was always rocking at Bradford. Um, two decent, two decent grounds. I like playing there. And uh, who was the most skillful player you've ever played with? What is up there, isn't it? For a forward, <laughs> ball play, half back stuck in a prop's body, would it? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I played again. I've been fortunate to play with a few Brazier. You know, Brazier had the the brain and the skill. Until you play with him, you, didn't, you don't realise how good Brazy was. Uh, probably Trent Barrett at Wigan. Trent was pretty class, you know, classy. He, he took, he, you know, loads a lot off him. So probably, you know, them two probably stick out. What have you've had a 15 year career so far? How many years have you got left at Warren? Um, <clears throat> well, I've got rest of this year. Uh, so, yeah, rest of this, this season. He's <laughs> got rest of this year. Yeah. 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 No, rest we'll of go the, from there. Yeah, yeah. No, I've got got this season and uh, I am contracted for next. Uh, unless, unless Simon's thinking of anything else than Tony. But yeah, and then I've got to go another year. I want to try and play for as long as I can. Uh, yeah. I'm 32 now. I lo- I'd love to play till I'm 36, but uh, just see how the body holds it. Who's, who's been the per- person on the pitch you've had the best battles with? Who, who, would, you, who would you call your nemesis throughout your career? Um. I don't think I've really had one. Um, just anyone you step on pitch, you like, I really don't like him. We'll give him it today. Uh, Jones, yeah. <laughs> 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 nah, uh, to be honest, no one. Uh, I, I never, I never think like that really as a as a player. I don't. Uh, what about you, Mickey? You got anyone like that? Or you just love love competing against? You thought you know I want to give him I, it today. I always wanted to play against Moz, but I never never got chance uh, to play. I obviously played with him, but yeah. I wanted to play against Moz. But Why I'm is that? Like, just because I look, Moz to me was like my sort of idol really yeah. growing up as like saying a youngster making him sound old now but uh, like when I was in academy at Warrington I used to watch Moz at Leeds and I used to think oh he, he's a good player and I used to look up to him and then when I managed to play with him it, I, I respected him even more then and uh, I might get chance this year you know when I come back from injury we, we play Salford might get my chance to play against him but I haven't met are you Mick? against is it- I've got a few of me, really. Because, <laughs> like, be the little it middle. That's where everybody runs out. Something like, I think JP was a big one for me. You know, he always, yeah. he always seemed to target me out. and we like tackling a brick wall at times. So, and just I think again with JP's longevity in the game, I was, you know, he's still top of his game now. You know, to, to do that week week in week out, position he plays as well. Pretty special effort. What what's been the biggest hit you've ever taken? Where you've you like, you actually been smashed and you tried to get up and play ball, tried to keep tried to keep it together, but really you're just thinking inside, oh my god, get me off this pitch now. Oh well, uh, <clears throat> well, I, I I give the same answer every time I've been asked what's the biggest hit, but uh, I think it would yeah it would have been two thousand and one first um, game. It was at Wilderspool, was playing for St Helens, and. Uh, Dal Vanderveld decided to put me on for the last 20 minutes. I think I was only about 14 stone. And I, was, I was packing down against Vila Matutia. And uh, I got the ball and I just run straight. I don't know why I run straight at him. And he just absolutely creamed me. I managed to get up and I played the ball and that. But I always remember that hit thinking, that, that, that. that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he just, I just don't know why I run straight at him. Nothing between, between the ears. <laughs> what's, what's been your greatest achievement in your career so far? Um, obviously, the Challenge Cup wins have been good. Um, managed to play for England against uh, the New Zealand at Warrington uh, in two thousand and five. It was like what, like the reserve grade to Great Britain then, and uh, that was pretty special, especially with it being at Warrington. And uh, you know, we managed. I think Jonesy played in that. Did you play in that? Yeah. What was that list? That, that? 2005 at Warrington when we played New Zealand. Yeah, I did yeah, 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 brilliant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We had a pretty, pretty we played uh, France at Edinley and then we played New Zealand at uh, Warrington and it was pretty good to run out with a, you know, an England shirt on and um, you know to to do it at, at Warrington as well. Uh, it's pretty pretty good. What's the best piece of media coverage you've ever had in your career? Ooh. <laughs> um I don't know really. Uh, 
<laughs> I'll tell you best headline, would you believe it? That was a classic. <laughs> I always wanted that when I was a kid and I, like, I managed to get it. Fingers all the way to Guardian. Like, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but obviously the injury uh, a few years ago got quite a lot of a lot of press coverage. Uh, but uh, some good, some bad. Nothing take, else? Take no such thing as bad publicity. This no one. else you want to add to that? It's a lie. I want to do teammates now. You want to dish the dates and you're warranting teammates. I want to give you a question, a, a, a one word, and you've got to tell us who that is and why that is. Who is the ugliest at Warrington? Ugliest? Yeah, everyone says um, V7s uh, being, <laughs> being the ugliest, but he, he's yeah, the yeah. one that probably gets the most women. Honestly? Honestly, yeah, yeah. He's, he's only a young lad, young single lad, and uh, sympathy, he's, sympathy he's, he's using the old... Uh, I play for Warrington Wolves, you know. Uh, you, <laughs> the, the old classic in, in the night club. Watch running, watch running, training, training kit, don't it? Full, yeah, yeah. Call, they call them full kit, full kit, yeah, tanker. Yeah, uh, but yeah, he's, he, and it does really well. But like I say, all lads say he's, he's, he's the ugliest man in Super League. They say he's doing all right though. But he's doing yeah. very, very well. Yeah. Who, who's the best looking? Who's the salt in the team? Oh, he's a behind us. Um, uh, <laughs> it's Matty Russell. Yeah. Matty Russell. Yeah, yeah. Matty's come. Yeah. yeah, he's uh, all, like, my my wife and, and Mickey's wife are, are pretty good mates and they're, they're like, they want us bring him round all the time. <laughs> like, like, is Matty coming round? Like, like kids in a schoolyard, you know. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. And he's got the rig as well. He, yeah, he's in good shape, isn't he? Yeah, he's got, got, a, got a good personality, isn't he? Loving me. Who's your rugby man crush? Matty Russell would have definitely. Is, 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 oh, is, 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 who's your man crush in the team? Yeah, who's your man? Matty. Mate, would like, you pass him? It's just, it's just something about Wigan lads as well. Like when, when Wigan lads are together, you just always congregate together. So Matty's a Wigan lad. We just hang around together all the time now. Because uh, nobody can understand Mickey, them. Gets, <laughs> like, Mickey gets jealous. He thinks I'm, uh, I'm tra- trying to like... I don't. I don't. He gets jealous because in Australia I spend a lot of time on ta- in, in tanning club, one. I don't. I don't. I don't care. <laughs> but you, 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 Mickey. My is, best mate, Big Illy, Big Chris Hill. Is it? Lee Bus. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We, tra- we travel together, me and Illy. <laughs> yeah, we have, um, I like Big Chill. He's tan- a tan- great tan- player. What, what he, yeah, he's um, he's doing. He's been our probably our standout player this year. Consistency every week. Week in, week out, top scores. Big minutes, massive Big, minutes. I think he only played there, only played 70 minutes against Bradford. <laughs> and for, us, for for his stats against a, in a poor performance, his stats were unbelievable at the weekend. He's just, he just churns them out week in, week out, like, so, you know, what he wants, take a leaf when you come back. <laughs> oh, oh, <yeah. laughs> who's always late, who's always late to training, who's, who's the one who's always getting fined? He used to be Benny Westwood, didn't it? <laughs> Yeah. One of our best players, but Benny, we train at 9.30, Benny just walked through the door, about 9.28, <laughs> ready ready to go, just does enough, doesn't he? Yeah, Mozzie used to be the same, I think it's a captain thing as well, like, because uh, Adrian Moll is the same, you used to rock in at like 29 25, minutes past, yeah. past nine and just rock into the gym, bang straight into his training, you know, he wasn't wasn't one for turning up early, yeah. and Benny Westwood does the same, doesn't Yeah, he sits on massage bed looking at his iPhone and putting his pocket going to do a few weights and that <laughs> Benny gets in his car and goes home oh, don't, don't even share at a club that's how, much, that's how, how little he does but fair play since he's been injured he's been doing a bit of work hasn't he yeah, yeah. he's in a right foul mood <laughs> I can't speak to him <laughs> <laughs> proper grumpy oh, who's that. swimming at 7 o'clock in the morning who does that he's like oh yeah it's it I want to say who's the angry man at work uh, who's the one because Bridgie he's, he's, he, he went yesterday yeah Bridgie, yeah, Bridgie's but, yeah, Bridgie's what will Luke Gale saying on pitch don't know. I don't know. He's, 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 it's nasty. Bridgie is like though, isn't it? Yeah, he's a bit of Bridgie. It's a bit of fire in his belly. It's good to see. He, he played. After, I thought he played better after that. Yeah, I think Bridgie's definitely one of our angry men. He's yeah. calmed down a lot though as well, but he's still very angry. But he's, Rals, he's calmed Rals, down. Rals, a lot. Rals is a little fiery. Yeah, yeah. He, fiery he got bin at weekend. Scrapping uh, at weekend. Rals. Field, yeah. Yeah. He, he, yeah, he takes jokes to art, doesn't he? Yeah. Who, who's the most skillful? Skillful in the team. Now, Breeze is left, but who's Who's the, who's the, who's the techers? Steph Ratchford's uh, pretty skilled. Yeah, pretty yeah, skillful, yeah. He's got some skilled stuff, yeah. Uh, Talented. C- catch ball around his ankles, anything, can't he? He's, yeah. Uh, you know, kick, he can kick, catch, pretty much. Pass, yeah. He's good. Probably Steph. Uh, 
Just can't tackle, can I? Who's the tightest of the team? Who's I, the I am an Iller. What? Hill and Wood. That Joint. tight, they only breathe in. <laughs> hey, got your joke? Yeah. Hey! Should, should, should should keep setting him up. Who's the most likely to cry over a movie? Who's a soft, very soft touch in the inside? Ryan Atkins. <laughs> I, I, he cries over like Lion King and that. <laughs> and he, he's, he's one of these lads who goes on Twitter and goes, just watching Lion King, hashtag Disney, hashtag Boom and all this. And like, <laughs> loves it. What's that carry on with the car crash? I saw something about it. That upset him. Did you have a car accident or something? Yeah, yeah apparently, but, yeah, yeah. It's St. Helens game, wasn't it? We, yeah. didn't really know, we didn't really know, really. Obviously, he didn't mention he played. Yeah. He came in his... <laughs> he had a shocker. We well, crashed car up my over and it's out. Yeah, I think he had a bump. His, well, his wife was in the car with a little and had a bump. Ah, right. And obviously he said he still had to get to the game and he just said it affected a bit of his form, I think. I don't yeah. know whether... So he seems to be coming back into a bit of better form. Yeah, yeah. A bit, yeah, of, yeah. bit, off, bit off. Yeah, last few weeks he's, um, he's got back to his best because when he's, when he's on form, Rhino, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a real handful, big athlete, you know, he's... We want to see him back at his best and he's he's not far away now. Like, he's, he's, he's coming good. Who's the best at FIFA? A lot of boys... I'm, I'm a big FIFA man myself. We'll have FIFA in the studio next week. So we can have a little game. Young boys, isn't it? Love, yeah, love, love yeah. the FIFA. Um, in Australia, there was... Danny, Bri- Danny Bridge. Yeah, there's Bridge. a few, he's there? He's at Bradford, isn't he? I'll take him on, Bridge. Yeah, he's just, he's co- he's just come, come back. He's just come back, back to this week, yeah. He was 18th man for us yesterday. Bridge is pretty good at FIFA. Said he was sick of losing. Come to us and we got beat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I don't know. He's, I've told him spend too much time on FIFA. Go and do some bit, a little bit of studying or something. You know what I mean? College one afternoon a week instead of playing in mini league on FIFA. Who's <laughs> 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 who's the practice at Royal? Uh, Joel, Joel like Joel's a yeah. He likes the dog, doesn't he? Yeah, Joel Monarch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Probably took it a bit too far in that time. <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, yeah, we've got He's a few a... actually, haven't we? Just it just depends what type of pranks. I mean, what what's the best prank you've each of you have seen in your career? Um, a few, isn't it? It's off the top of my head. I can't think. Grix, I think I think Grix, Grix is like one for like you know if you do anything to Grixer, he'll go back like ten times worse. I think yeah. I think one with Brett Hodgson. I think I'll Jordan. I'll Jordan. Pick. He le- I think he left him. At, um, I think he left him in terms of like you know the show lifts and he they were like him. Yorkshire bus. I think, <laughs> think Grix is. I think Audrey said I'm going. I'm, not, I'm leaving. He left Grix. So anyway, <laughs> Audrey used to have like his circuit gum shield and his thing, and he opened his gum shield one day and was excrement. A little bit of excrement in his gum shield. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Sam, you know Sam. He always has to go on better Grix, and he's um, that's why he never mess with Sam because anything can happen. Used to uh, Lee Penny used to play at Warrington. He was murdered for um, if. If anyone played a joke on him, like one time Dean Busby put uh, ordered, it, it was he had his lawn pristine, everything was like <laughs> immaculate. It was like a bowling green his, his lawn, and Dean Busby got like a skip landed on his lawn, left there. <laughs> so like then Lee Penny had put like he's selling dogs in loot, so put Dean Busby's number, so everyone was ringing him up about these dogs, and his just form was just, <laughs> so they're just stupid stuff like that. But quite funny back then. <coughs> I love, I love stuff like that. Everything childish like that, I love it. Um, who's the best at golf? A big golf team? Yeah, no, Gaz O'Brien, yeah. Yeah, young Gaz. He's, probably that's why he's a decent decent halfback. He's got that timing. He's a good golfer, isn't he? Plays off. Breezy was pretty good as well, wasn't he? Yeah, Breezy were good, yeah. Gaz is, I think he's single figures, isn't he? Like, you know, is it Scratch, a golf? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, something down, like that. Down, yeah. down, down, down. Whatever they call it. Right, it was a good walk. Last but not least, who's the coach's favourite? Oh, probably probably Monas, isn't it? Yeah, Mick yeah. Monas. Yeah, Mick Monas. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah it's like opposite. Pretty, Mick, said, he hates Mick and loves loves Monas. <laughs> I, like, yeah. I seen him come off yesterday, Monas, and they stood really close, talking deep, Tony and Mick. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah. They do like, yeah. I don't know yeah. Close knit them too. <laughs> Mick get, gets, get, gets to me. Yeah. Right, Ty, we're gonna we 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 we've got play this weekend. That's uh, that's your teammates. What we've got left to do for the show? We'll go through the, the weekend's games right quickly. Uh, we spoke about earlier the Sky game this week, Castleford against the Leeds Rhinos. Big game, I reckon. I'm, ca- I'm gonna go for a cast win this week. Uh, Friday night, you've got a Hull FC against Wigan. The game on Sky is uh, Warrington against the Catalan Dragons. Witness versus Wakefield. Saturday, you've got London against the Huddersfield Giants. Salford against Hull KR. And Sunday, big game down at uh, Bradford. Bradford against St. Helens. 
Yeah, I'll be there. I'll be. Uh, I'm gonna get Alex Wamsley with the old hand shit this week. That, without a doubt, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get him. Um, well, I'd just like to say thanks everyone coming. We're, we're, a bit of news on the TV. The TV is happening on the third week in May. We're gonna be filming, so better get to the gym, uh, and you better grow somewhere. <laughs> Neither's happening, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Keithy. <sighs> Um, yeah, so um, TV's happening uh, third week in May. Uh, we're gonna be, we're not gonna go out live first two. We're gonna be recording them, editing them, putting them out, and then when well, they said that, they were a bit worried about what might, what we might say live, or what I might say live, should I say? Um, so yeah, that's all going well. Th- I'd like to thank Mickey and Paul for coming over tonight and taking the time out of the busy schedules to come. Bit of a clap. Thank you, cheers, love it. New studio. Can it, can anyone tell us how their listening has been tonight? Because we've had some uh, positives and we just want to make sure that we're sounding better now we're in the new studio. Thank you very much for listening to the show tonight and we'll see you next week. We'll be announcing on our website, rubbym.co.uk, who's the guest for next week. But big love, one love. See you later.